You guys, Vintage Fember is here! And this is the first collaboration as part of Vintage Fember Sewing, yes! So I created this jumper and I wanna tell you all about it. So if that's some content you would like to see, please continue to watch. Lollipop, lollipop, oh lolly, 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 lollipop, lollipop, oh lolly, 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 lollipop. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. It's Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you McCall 7184. Yes, and I created a jumper. And this is a collaboration with my good friend, Natita from So Natural Dame. And I will show you what she created as well. Now, if you are new to the channel, welcome. Hello, ciao, guten tag, aloha, hola, konnichiwa, wagwan, sambadani, salon, bonjour. If you are returning, you guys know what to do. Go get you a quick snack, something to drink. Come on back so I can give you a quick pattern review. And then guess what? <laughs> I did a sew along for you guys so you guys could get to the sew along after I do the pattern review. So without further ado, and to keep this sweet and vintage, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so what I created is this pattern right here. McCall 7184. So I'm gonna get my own pattern description because your girl did not look at the Simplicity website. I don't know why I don't do that, but I think it's easier for me to get my own. So what I created, so this has two views. It has view A and view B. Now I created view B, which is the jumper, the romper, the, I'm sorry, the jumper, the pinafore, whatever you wanna call it, right? So view A is the top. I did not create the top. I just used a white button down shirt. And if you've been following any of my videos, then you know I put a white button down shirt in every, I mean, every collection, okay? So any type of collection I do, we have what? A button down shirt. And if you got that right, guess what? Give yourself a round of applause. All right, so I created view B, which is the jumper or the pinafore. And what this is, it's a fit and flare style pinafore. You also have like crisscross buttons. So the buttons is on the strap, but you could crisscross it in the back, like you will see on the photos, as well as you could just make it kind of like a overall style, if you choose. It does have princess seams, and it also have a back zipper and a narrow hem. So that is the pattern description for this pattern. Let's talk about skill level, y'all. So for this pattern, the website rates it as easy. Do I feel this pattern is easy? Absolutely. I agree. This is easy. There's nothing that I feel that you're going to get completely tripped up outside of possibly doing a zipper. But other than that, I don't feel that you will get tripped up with this pattern whatsoever. Let's talk about the Notion shoes. So for the Notions, you're going to need a zipper. Now, according to the back of the pattern, you're going to need a seven inch expose all purpose zipper. Now you can use a invisible zipper if you choose it. It's probably because it's the fifties, people wasn't using invisible zippers. Let's just be real. Everyone was probably using exposed zippers back then. So to each his own, right? And then you're also going to need two buttons. So the buttons need to be 5 8 of an inch button. I believe my buttons are 5 8 of an inch. I don't know, to be honest with you. But yeah, you're gonna need at least 5 8 of an inch button. You need two of those. Now it does mention that you will need hook and eyes, but you guys know how I do. 
I leave out the hook and eyes and just take my zipper all the way up to the top. So those are the notions that you need, you need for this dress. Let's talk about fabric, of course. So as far as fabric, the fabric used is from Wax Prints Lace and More. This is 100% Ankara print. Now I did show this fabric when I did, um, when I was showing all the different fabrics that I have in the color white, I believe this was as part of the white collection. I'll go ahead and drop that video in the description box below as well as on the end screen. Now in that video, I shared the other yardage that I will be making kind of like a table runner and stuff like that for my table. So I had a lot left and I didn't know what to do. So I went ahead and pulled it out to make this jumper and I am super excited for this jumper, okay? <laughs> so let's talk about pattern pieces. Okay, now I'm not gonna get into the pattern pieces because you're gonna hear this in the sew along, but as far as pattern pieces go for the jumper, you're gonna need pattern piece number six through 12. So that's seven pattern pieces. So you need, of course, the front, the back, you need the side front, the side back, you need the straps, the back facing and the front facing. That's it. Seven pattern pieces in and out the door, good to go, okay? So yes, yeah, so that's um, in terms of uh, pattern pieces. Let's talk about the pattern sizing, shall we? All right, so for this pattern, it comes in two separate envelopes. So actually, I don't know how, so on the Simplicity website, it has a kid's size of three to eight if you wanna do it kind of like a mommy and me on the pattern like you see, right? But also it has an adult size, I believe on the website it says eight to 22. Now, because my pattern is from when it first came out, um, I wanna say this pattern probably came out in like 2014, 2015, don't quote me on that. I'll definitely make sure I'm correct. I'll put it up on the, on the screen when this pattern came out, when I originally picked it up, okay? Um, but the size that I have from when I originally picked it up is the small to extra large. I think that's the only pattern size. If you picked it up back in 2014, 2015, when it first came out, that's the size that you will have, um, small, medium, large, and extra large. So. For me, I cut the size large for mine. And the reason why is because of the hips. I wanted to make sure I had enough room in the hips. Now, when you look at the um, waist area, it, it it's actually a little too big, but it was not bad simply because when you have the tatas up there, you wanna make sure you have enough room and you don't have pulling. So the straps were perfect. Now I can show you that in terms of the straps, you're going to have like, the straps are super long. And I like that because if for some reason you put the button on to, you know, put the button on in the wrong spot, you can undo the button and kind of, you know, move the button up or down, depending on comfort level, okay? So yeah, I do like it. So the size that I cut was a large, you'll see that in the sew along here shortly, all right? Let's talk about modifications. So did I make any modifications to this pattern? I didn't make necessarily a modifications, but I did add a pocket. And in the sew along, I show you how I took a child's pattern, pocket pattern, because that's what I had in my drafting stash. And I did not want to go to my connect box with all pocket pieces and, you know, belt loops and everything that I have drafted over the course of many years. So I decided to look in my, uh, drafting stash that I keep in a big old envelope that's right at my cutting slash sewing filming area. And the only thing I found was a child's pattern. So I'm gonna show you how you take that child's pattern and size it up for an adult and get you some mm, pockets. Yes, yes, yes. So we got some pockets based off of that child's pattern and you will see that here shortly, all right? <laughs> Let's talk about did it look like the photos or the drawing on the pattern envelope? Um, yes, it does. I love this jumper. I will be making one for my daughter because after I created this one, she, oh, matter of 
fact, you know what? Let me pause for the calls for a second and give a shout out to my daughter because she took my pictures. And this is about the only time that I can listen to a 13 year old directing me to take photos. Outside of that, I really can't listen to a child for anything else, but she does a fabulous job when she takes my photos. So kudos to her. Thank you, baby girl, because I know you are watching this video. All right, so back to what I was saying. Um, yes, it does look like the photos in the drawn on patent envelope. Instructions, are the instructions e easy to follow? Um, to be honest with you, I really didn't follow those, but I did glance at them for the sake of the tutorial. So yes, it is easy to follow, I would say. All right, let's talk about likes and dislikes. Are there any, let's talk about dislikes first. Are there any dislikes? Yes, there is a dislike. And the only dislike that I do not like is, I should have known this, it's not necessarily a dislike, but it could be aggravating if you wanna wear this to like, you sew it up and then you wanna wear it the next day. You cannot, okay? Let me put it like this, one more time for the people in the back. You cannot wear it the next day. And I'm gonna tell you why. So with this dress, the first dislike is how white the hem is, okay? So listen, <sighs> doing a narrow hem on this <laughs> jumper, it almost took the life out of me, okay? <laughs> and it's probably because to be honest, this is the second vintage pattern that I have done. So I'm not used to sewing a dress that you have to sew pretty much in a 3.55K mile radius on the hem. I'm not used to it, but listen, we made it do what it do because once I tried this dress on, I was like, mm -mm, nothing is stopping me because ain't no stopping me now. We're on a move. Yes, we're on a move with this vintage vibra, okay? So listen, I wasn't gonna let it stop me. So what I, what did I do? I got me some H2O water, put on some music, and made that hem sing, okay? <laughs> That's exactly what I did, okay? <laughs> All right, let's talk about first time experiences. Um, I don't have any first time experience per se with this outside of this would be the second vintage pattern that I have sewn. But to be honest with you, because this is a reproduction pattern, it's it's not written in the, I would say like, when it comes to the instructions, it's written as in today's instructions and not a vintage. So it's hard to say if it's a actual reproduction pattern or not, or if they just say that this is from the archive collection of 1958. It's hard to say because looking at the instructions, it's not like a vintage pattern where it's kind of hard to say. So in the instructions, just kind of give you the instruction. It does have unit one, unit two like that but the instructions is not difficult to understand like some of the previous patterns that I have seen for vintage patterns, if that makes sense. If you know, you know. If you have been sewing vintage patterns, please comment in the description box below if I'm not explaining it well, okay? So you can help the other viewers, <laughs> you know, understand what I'm trying to say, all right? I'm trying to explain it as best as I can possible, okay? But this is the second vintage pattern that I have sewn and we are gonna be sewing some more. Moving on, all right? Now, let's talk about what I saw this pattern again. Or yeah, what I saw this pattern again. Absolutely, so I do plan, I have plans to sew this for my daughter. She wants one, so I'll probably sew it for her. If I sew it again for myself, it'll just be in a solid color. And I think just doing it in either like a navy blue or a black, would fit the bill for what I want to do. But I could also see this as a nice pastel color, like a till or a lilac or something like that. I think that would be amazing too. And just put kind of like some nice buttons on it or whatever, kind of like a sparkle glittery button. I think that would be amazing. Okay, so I can't see myself sewing this dress again. Let's talk about what I recommend this pattern to others. Absolutely. I would recommend this to anyone that's a beginner. Um, the only thing that I would say is practice on making zippers, um, both exposed and invisible zippers. If you have mastered that skill, I would say this is a super easy pattern for you to do. All right, now let's talk about the collaboration. Now that I talked about the pattern review, let's talk about the collaboration. Okay, so first of all, I am collaborating with 
Natita. Yeah, if you don't know anything about Natita, so natural dang, go over to her channel and see what she created for Vintage Fimber. Now, Miss Natita, she created a top. And the pattern is Simplicity 9317. If I'm incorrect, I think it's either Simplicity 9371 or 9317. I'm gonna put her pictures up on the screen as well as her channel in the description box below. If you're not following Natita, Natita is so sweet and so amazing, honestly, okay? She is the creator behind hashtag BHM Pattern Designers. Yes, the sewing buzz, yes, okay? <laughs> Natita, she be doing her thing over there on her channel, so make sure you watch her. And oh, her ad, listen, I love her personality, and that's Mal, y'all. You guys have heard me talk about Natita before when we have done a collaboration before. Last year in July, when we did a collaboration for a, a circle skirt. So yes, this is the second time I have collaborated with Natita from So Natural Day. So, if you're not following her, go over there and hit that subscribe button because your girl's gonna be mad if you don't. No, I'm just joking, okay? But yeah, go over to Natita's channel and show her some love and yes, definitely see what she created for Vintage Fimber. All right, now before I get out of here, one more thing. Now, this is open to the entire sewing community. So if you want to participate, because there is a prize at the end and I will share that with you during the roundup, okay, <laughs> of Vintage Vember. Now, I don't wanna tell you what you will win, but I will tell you, it is good, okay? <laughs> it is good um, in terms of the prize that I am giving away. And when I say giveaway, it's a giveaway. So five lucky winners will win a prize, okay? And one person will win the grand prize. So there's six prizes up for grabs, all right? now. Getting back into it, and before we get into the sew along, I am going to put exactly the guidelines up on the screen. So I wanna say it one time, that this challenge goes from November 1st to November 30th, okay? The times that I post will be different. Most of them will be at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, there will be a few that I will post in the afternoon, so just stay locked to the channel and I will tell you that. One other thing, we're not sewing kids' patterns, we're not sewing any aprons, home decor, doggy clothes, anything like thereof. It has to be in garment. If you wanna enter into the channel challenge, make sure you use hashtag Vintage Vember Sewing. If you wanna show your work in progress, which you can do that, you can use hashtag Vintage Vember WIP, which stands for work in progress, all right? Now, make sure you tag me in your post on Instagram, okay? So I am able to see your make. Also, if you are doing any videos for Vintage Vember, please make sure you tag me so I could comment and also put your video in the playlist as well as have you included in the drawing for the prize at the end, all right? Now that I talked about everything, one thing I wanna tell you is to stay tuned for Tuesday as the next collaborator will be coming up, which is T from Crumpety and Sewing. You wouldn't wanna miss what we collaborated on, all right? Now that I am done talking about the pattern review, the guidelines, who's coming up, and the person I collaborated with, let's go ahead and get over to the store. All right, so I am working on McCall 7184. I am working on this jumper. So I'm gonna show you guys kind of like how I'm putting it together. So let's go ahead and get started. So go ahead and grab pattern piece number seven and number eight, which is your front and your side front. I'm sorry, pattern piece number six and pattern piece number seven. So we're gonna grab our front and side front. Now I made, um, I wrote on the wrong side like I normally do. And what I'm gonna do is with right sides together, I'm going to pin my side front to my front, okay? So you're just gonna pin at both sides, matching up the notches that you may have. And yeah, go ahead and get that 
together. So make sure that you have your single notch match up to your single notch. So I'm gonna turn it this way and you have a single notch right here. Make sure you match those up. Now make sure that the double notch that you have, I'm gonna double notch is towards the center because you're gonna put a zipper right there. So just make sure that you are matching up your notches on the side and I'm going to pin all the way down. So go ahead and pin all the way down on both sides and then you're gonna sew using five eight seven inch seam allowance back stitch at the beginning and at the end so i'm gonna go ahead and pin both of those and then sew them together all right so go ahead and do that now all right so now that i have it pinned using five eighths of an inch seam allowance back stitch at the beginning and at the end and go ahead and sew your front to your side front do the same thing to the other side and then finish off your seams go ahead and do that now all right so now that i have the front attached to the side front go ahead and move this out of the way grab your uh, back and your side back which is pattern piece number eight and pattern piece number nine now I'm going to show that you guys this right here. So where you have these triple notches right here, this is your center back and this is where your zipper is going to be. Okay. So we're going to pin our side back to the portion where you have the single notch. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way so you do not get confused. And I'm just going to take one back now remind you this side right here is your center back where your double notches your triple notches I'm sorry triple notches are so go ahead and grab one pattern piece number nine which is your side back and make sure you have a single notch okay so your single notches should match up so I'm gonna grab one pattern piece number nine and if it doesn't match up then you have the wrong one okay so you should have one that's a single notch and one that's a double notch so this one is not the right one so I'm going to make sure that it is the right one right here so this is a single notch and match up to that single notch and then I'm going to pen all right so make sure that you do not have the side where you have that double notch okay and then you're just going to pin all the way down the side of pattern piece uh, eight, which is your back. So you make sure you go ahead and pin your side back to your back. OK, so do that. Now, this is what it's going to look like. This is pattern piece number eight. This is pattern piece nine, number nine. Now I'm going to grab my other pattern piece number eight to go ahead and stitch together my center back. So grab pattern piece number eight, and you could do this before you do pattern piece number nine, just to give you that as well. Now this is my other pattern piece number eight, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pin that at the triple notches right here. And you're basically going to pin from the bottom to that dot that you have, okay? Now, you probably can't see the dot, on mine because my fabric is pretty dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pattern piece and mark it for you. So I'm gonna grab pattern piece number eight again. And my dot is roughly right here. Like I said, you probably can't see it because it is dark right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a pen right here to let me know I need to stop sewing right there okay and then i'm just going to pin pattern piece number eight from the bottom all the way up to that dot so go ahead and pin pattern piece number eight your center backs together now so now that i have um, my center back pin from the bottom all the way up to the dot i have that pin now what i'm going to do because i'm going to sew a lot of things um together so i'm going to recap real quickly Pattern piece number eight, which is your back, you are pinning from the hem all the way to that dot, okay? Because you're gonna use a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning, and back stitch at this dot. And then what I'm gonna do is base all the way up because that's where my zipper is going to be, all right? And then on the other side, you have pattern piece number nine, 
attached to your side uh, back. So side back attached to your back all the way down and you're gonna sew using a regular length stitch, back stitch at the beginning and at the end. So what I'm gonna do on this side, cause I'm gonna sew this all in one. Now this is pattern piece number eight that you're looking at. Grab the other, other pattern piece number nine and then we're going to pin that side as well. So here's my pattern piece number nine, right? And I did right on the wrong side to make sure that it is correct. And what I'm gonna do is pin at that single notch right here and pin all the way down the length of the side back. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have pattern piece number nine, the side back pinned to the back, what I'm going to do is stitch, stitch both of the side backs to the back using regular length stitch, using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and at the end on both sides. I'm also gonna sew the center back going from the hem up to that dot using a regular length stitch. Once I get to that um, dot, I'm gonna switch to a basting stitch and take it all the way up. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my center back seam sewn from the bottom, well, from that dot down and I top stitch, I press the seam towards the back, the, the back, and then I top stitch to keep the seam in place when I'm wearing it um, on all the seams. That's what I did. All right, so then the next thing that we're going to do, this is the back. You see, this is the center back. What we're gonna do is go ahead and install our zipper. So what I'm gonna do is place right sides together. This is that dot that I was telling you about. I'm going to pin at that dot right here. And then I'm gonna pin all the way up to the top. So go ahead and pin all the way up to the top, making sure right sides together as well. So go ahead and pin all the way up to the top now. All right, so now that I have it uh, pin from the top to that dot. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to back stitch whatsoever. I'm just going to base all the way down, press my seams open, and then I'm going to go ahead and install my invisible zipper. Now, in the instructions, it tells you to do an exposed zipper. Guess what? I don't have an exposed zipper um, at all in my stash right now, and I don't feel like going to JoJo, aka Joann's. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and just use what I have right now, and it's a invisible zipper. Now, this is 22 inches. I believe in the instructions, it tells you nine inches. So I'm just gonna use what I have because, hey, why not? So I'm just gonna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and base, go ahead and install my zipper, and then I'll come back so we could go ahead and start working on attaching this side front to the side back and then work on our strap. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have my zipper installed in the back of my dress, the next thing we're gonna do is attach the front to the back at the side front and side back. But before we do that, go ahead and grab number 10 so we could kind of like go ahead and do multiple things at a time. You guys know I like to maximize my time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do the straps first and then attach the front to the back at the side front. All right, so grab pattern piece number 10. And what we're going to do is with right sides together, like this, we're gonna go ahead and sew the um, straps together along the top and this end right here. Now you should have uh, dots so right here at the dot, so basically you're going to start at the dot, so all the way across and then down. You're going to be using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, so go ahead and pin um, both of your straps now. All right, so I have both of my straps pinned, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew across this uh, straight edge and across all the way down to that dot and then back stitch at the dot. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end for the straps. All right. 
Now, go ahead and grab your dress, and I am looking at the back. That's where my zipper is, so I'm just gonna move my straps out of the way right quick. This is how you maximize your time. Just FYI, I'm just trying to give you guys a way of not going back and forth to the um, sewing machine after each step, okay? Now, a couple of things I will say right now is if you want some pockets on your dress, before you attach your front to your back, you want to go ahead and add those pockets right now. What I mean by that is if you want pockets, you could drop pockets, you could take pockets from another pattern. You want to add it to your side back and your side front. So cut four pockets, add it to your side front and your side back, and then attach your front to the back at the side front and the side back. Now me personally, um, I'm not gonna add the pockets this time around. Um, and just for the sake of, because it's a vintage style pattern, I don't think I want the pockets right now. Um, we'll see, okay? <laughs> so with right sides together, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my front to the back at the side seams. And with right sides together, what you're going to do is just basically pin the front the side front to the side back just like this, all the way down, all right? Now, I'm kind of thinking about it and I might need some pockets. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut some pockets, um, add that to the front and the back. So basically, I'm just gonna make the pockets big enough just to go, and I'm gonna attach it from the top all the way down like we normally have done pockets on this channel literally so many times, okay? So I'm gonna do that and then stitch my side seam Finish it off. Now, stitch in the side seam, you're gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. If you are doing pockets, make sure after you sew your pocket onto your front and your back at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, finish off your seam, press your pocket towards your, um, press your seam allowance towards your pocket, and then you're only going to under, under stitch on the front pocket, which is the uh, pattern piece number six, which is your side front. You're only going to understitch on your front pockets, attach those pockets and the side seams, finish it off, and then come back and we'll continue. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I'm gonna take this child pocket and modify it to get a pocket for this dress. Um, I, I could, of just went and got a pocket from another pattern. But listen, sometimes I just want it to be a little different. So I'm gonna put another piece of paper down here after. But what I did is I took my pattern piece and I just kind of like used this line to trace over here and then I moved it. Because across I want, it's basically about three and a half inches across so from I'm, I'm gonna tell you yep it's three and a half inches across the top so that's what I did so I extended it out so it could be three and a half inches across the top and then what I did is I decided on how long I wanted this uh, right here and I wanted that to be nine and a half inches down before curving it okay so all I did was basically use this pocket kind of like moved it you could call it slash and spread um, in order to get the pocket that I desire, okay? So now what I'm doing is I'm just basically tracing the outer portion of this pocket. And then what I'll do is I'll continue this pocket all the way down until it meets. Once I put this other piece of paper down, it's going to meet up and be a big pocket that will go on this pattern, McCall 7184. So let's go ahead and finish it up and then I'll cut it out and uh, cut my fabric and put it onto the pocket, okay? It'll be pockets. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now that I have my pocket pretty much drafted the way that I want, I'm going to take my hip curve ruler and kind of straighten up these lines, okay? 
So all I'm going to do, well, this is my SA curve ruler, but you probably will be using a hip curve ruler. And all I'm going to do is take the lines and just kind of like reshape them. Okay. So they're not just any kind of way. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Make sure the lines are looking pretty good. And yeah, this is my pocket. And you could do something like I just did as well. And what you want to do is make your grain line. So I'm going to make my grain line down the middle, just like this. And try to do like, I'm going to do it like halfway between the two, which is one and a half inches, which is right here. And then I'm just gonna basically make my grain line right there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna mark grain line. Mark my two arrows. And then you wanna cut four of fabric. So I'm just gonna put pocket. Cut four of fabric. Cut it out and use it for your pockets. All right, so I have my side seam sewed on my side front and my side back. You can see that I have a pocket there as well. Um, I went ahead and did my straps. They're looking good as well. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and attach our straps. Now, this is the back, cause you have the zipper, right? Looking up at me. And I know you're wondering like, oh, Rochelle, your zipper is long. You guys know by now, if you've been following me, I use long zippers to keep the zipper pull out of my way. Now, what you wanna do is go ahead and grab your strap. And what you want to do is look at how you have your angled. And if you have this pattern and you're looking at the instructions, you will see that the angle, this angle needs to go on this side. Now, make sure you have, there's two dots right here. Make sure you place the dots. Basically, you're gonna line it up, right? This should be like this to where that angle is at the very top of your jumper, dress, whatever you wanna call it, okay? Pen of four, all right? So, so also make sure however you pressed it, you, I'm gonna try to bring it closer so you can see it. But you see how the press edge is under, so when I turn it, it looks really nice and, and crisp, right? It looks good. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. There's my dots right here. So I'm gonna look for how this is placed. So this side, the angle. So the corner needs to go on pretty much kind of like the line over here, and then there's a dot. So I'm gonna make sure that I line that up like so. And I'm gonna pen right there. And then I'm gonna make sure this match up to the other dot, okay? And I'm going to pen right there. Now I'm just gonna base this across, all right? Now before I go to the sewing machine and base this across, I'm just gonna move my dress out of the way and I'm gonna be basing this across at three eighths of an inch seam allowance, okay? So I'm just gonna move this out the way. I'll baste it in just a second. But now let's go ahead and do the home stretch and that home stretch is putting together the facing. So go ahead and grab pattern piece number 11 and 12. And what you wanna do is go ahead and open out pattern piece number 12 right here, which is your front facing. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna attach our back facing to our front facing at the side seams, okay? So what we want to do is make sure that we have the side seams. All right. Now make sure you are looking how your side seams are. Okay. And then what you want to do is pen. Now, one thing that I will tell you is that you should have a straight top and a straight bottom. So if you look at this, your back should be straight all the way across, okay? Same thing goes for the other side. So basically, 
when you when you place your pattern piece down that that angle right it should match up completely so if it doesn't match up you do not have the right side and then it needs to be switched okay so i'm going to go ahead and pin both sides of the facing just like so Now using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and at the end and sew those side seams and press the seams open. Go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that I have the facing pieces done, the next thing that we're going to do is attach the facing to our jumper or dress, all right? Now, of course, I need to base this, which I forgot to go ahead and base it, but it's fine. I'll just pin over it the straps over the facing okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start in the front of my dress so i'm just going to turn this around and what i'm going to do is pin the dress matching up the dots and the notches and all that good stuff so i'm just going to pin all the way around make sure you are matching up those side seams as well as well so go ahead and pin all the way around your dress now Now in the back, what you want to do is unzip your zipper and you want to make sure that you have your facing all the way out and place it over your zipper area because you're, you want to be able to clear the teeth. What that means is have a clean finish right in the back at your teeth area. So I'm going to put pins right there and I'm going to do it on the other side as well, but I'm going to go ahead and basically rearrange where the pins are for the straps to make sure those are in place and then just pin all the way through and the other side as well go ahead and do that now all right so now that i went ahead and pinned all the way around i'm going to be starting in the center front right here let me show you Right here, I'm gonna start in the center back using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, so all the way to the end until you get to the zipper teeth and then back stitch at the end. And then you wanna flip it over, starting back at the center front, 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, and then sew all the way to the other end. Once you do that, go ahead and finish off by your zipper area by sewing as close to the zipper teeth, but without sewing on the zipper teeth on both sides. Once you do that, trim it down, press your seam allowance towards the facing, and then understitch. Now, one thing I wanna tell you about understitching is you have dots. So at every dot, you want to break your thread to be able to understitch the underarm seams. Then you're gonna break your thread right at this dot, come around the neck edge, break your thread at this dot, and then come all the way back to the back, all right? understitch as far as possible. All right, so go ahead and do that and we'll come back and continue. All right, so there you have it. That's the complete pattern review, the collaboration, who's coming up, the guidelines, and the sew along. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you make this pinafore style dress or jumper style dress, do not forget to tag me in your videos at Design. Also, you can tag me in your photos on Instagram at rochelle.handmade.design. So I'll catch you in the next video. And as always, keep going.